Welcome everyone. Uh, you are joining us for our webinar all about MMA majors demystified. So if you're here to see that, you're in the right spot. My name is Elizabeth Allaby. I'm one of the admissions counselors at MMA at Maine Maritime Academy. Um, I'm just going to give it a couple moments more as folks trickle into the Zoom. I know right at seven o'clock it can be a little bit hectic trying to make sure you have the right link. So as you're joining, welcome. We're really excited that you've taken the time uh, out of your maybe busy Wednesday night to spend with us and our incredible panel of current students who will tell you from their perspective a little bit more about the variety of majors that we offer. So I'll pass it over to Kate. She can introduce herself and we'll do introductions all around. Um, before we do that, though, I got ahead of myself. Um, You'll notice that we're on what's called the webinars format of Zoom. So you can see us, you're certainly gonna hear from us, but we cannot see or hear you. That doesn't mean we don't wanna hear from you, absolutely not. So you might notice down below, there are two functionalities um, that you can use to ask us whatever questions you have. So there's the chat function, we'll be monitoring that. There's the Q and A function. Please don't be shy. We are doing this event for you. So we wanna make sure that we answer whatever questions that you have. That said, um, we have quite a good list of pre-submitted questions, and we'll work our way through those as well. Um, just so you know, uh, we'll just make sure that we do what we can to get you the answers that you came here tonight to hear. So that being said, I'll pass it over to Kate, and we'll work our way through some introductions. Good evening, everyone. Well, thank you all for joining. It looks like we've got quite a lineup um, of viewers. So we're really excited to uh, show you what we have to offer here at May Maritime. I'm Kate, I am the Associate Director of Admissions. So you've probably heard from us. Um, and if you haven't, you will, you will soon. But again, as Elizabeth said, please interact with us by chat and Q&A function. Um, our panelists are all keeping an eye to that as well. So you'll be firing back answers as fast as we can. But um, I'm going to turn it over to Haley Kent to start. And she's going to introduce herself, who she is, why she's here, and what she's studying. Hi, um, my name is Haley Kent. I am currently a junior here at MMA. Um, I'm majoring in marine science, small vessel operations, and coastal and marine environmental science, along with minoring in environmental sustainability. And um, I'm also a part of the varsity sailing team, along with the regiment of midshipmen as well. Um, and I am from Massachusetts also. Um, I chose MMA because I am just in love with the ocean. So I knew from a pretty young age that I wanted to do something with the marine sciences and something involving the ocean. And I've also pretty much had a fascination of boats all my life. So pretty much anything water-based. Um, so that's when I saw MMA. So I really knew I wanted a maritime school, but I saw MMA and I saw that they had a dual major program of marine science and also small vessel operations because I know I did, I don't want to go into like the shipping industry or anything like that. But so it really gave me an amazing opportunity to get that science degree with also getting a 200 ton Coast Guard license. So it's really cool now I'm able to go out in the scientific industry or be um, like a first mate or something like that, which is really cool. So if I were to go on a scientific vessel, I would also have that opportunity of driving the vessel. So it just really widens my um, opportunities, which I found really cool when I was looking here at MMA and it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, thanks Haley. Um, I just wanted to, to echo what she had said in terms of that small vessel operations. That is the portion of the major that's gaining that 200 ton license. So you can do small vessel operations as a standalone major, or you can combine it in one of our um, ocean studies majors as well. So that's pretty amazing. Shannon, I'm going to pass it to you to go next. All right. Hi, my name is Shannon. I'm a junior here at Maine Maritime in the Marine Transportation Operations Program. I'm originally from Buffalo, New York, and it's actually kind of a funny story how I ended up at MMA. Um, MMA was actually my backup school, um, and I didn't plan on staying, but here I am two years later, and 
I wouldn't change it for anything in the world. I absolutely love it here. Um, so I chose to stay. Um, I also didn't actually originally come here for marine transportation, marine transportation either. Um, I was originally the same major as Haley, marine science. And I thought marine transportation operations sounded like super, super cool. So ended up looking into it and deciding to switch. That's amazing. Yeah, no, it it's um, pretty amazing to be able to switch majors as well. So if you're like sitting here listening to our panelists and thinking, I have no idea which major would be the most amazing. I don't know which to choose. Um, you can start working with us. We can connect you with some of our students, but do do remember that you've heard from students that have been able to switch majors. So that is really important as well. I'm going to continue around the way that my screen set up. Ryan, I'm going to have uh, you go next. Hello, uh, my name is Ryan Reed. I'm a uh, I'm in the Vessel Operations and Technologies program. Uh, so it's a four year bachelor and you get a 1600 ton uh, license out of it. Um, and then during the summers, we do co-ops and depending on what co-ops we get, um, we can get oceans or near coastal um, time and that can go towards different levels of a 1600 ton license. So uh, even within the program itself, there's lots of options. Um, I originally chose the program because I have a lifelong background of being in and above the water. Um, and then with COVID, I decided to change careers and come here and actually get a uh, license working on vessels. And the cool thing about vessel operations is it trains you to work on anything from a uh, you know, small lobster boat size uh, all the way up to um, you know, large tugboats and offshore supply vessels and uh, pretty much anything uh, in between. And uh, in and amongst that, I'm also minoring in auxiliary sail and bio. So with that, I spent a lot of time down on the traditionally rigged schooner Bowden here on the here on campus and as of right now we're the only college that has a traditionally rigged uh, vessel and so I go down and play on it all the time. I'm actually the president of that club. Um, so yeah. How old's the Bowden, Ryan? Uh, Bowden turned 100 years this year. Actually that's the boat directly behind me uh, encased in the ice about 80 years ago. Pretty amazing um, to be able to sail a hundred year old boat every afternoon if you wanted um, one of the many opportunities, no matter what your major. I just wanted to mention again that um, we're gonna mention some of these license sizes, 200 ton, 1600 ton, unlimited size. And last week um, we had done a webinar about what the different licenses are all about. So if there's particular questions, um, that recording is still available. We can certainly explain some of that, but we have so much content to cover tonight um, that please reach out if there's any questions in terms of like, what is a 1600 ton license versus a 200 ton license and what can those opportunities um, allow you to do? And you can certainly ask that question in the Q&A and our students can jump right into that answer as well. Noah, can you uh, pop on here for international business? Uh, yep. Yeah. So my name is Noah Contreras. I'm in IBL or International Business and Logistics. Uh, <clears throat> I'm a junior, I'm in the regiment and I'm on the wrestling team here. Um, I'm from Newport, Maine, so I've born and grown up in Maine my whole life. Um, and the reason that I came here was because one of my friends from high school uh, was coming here for marine engineering. And uh, he said, I told him that I always wanted to do something with business. And he said that the school that he's going to had a business program. So I checked it out. Um, and then I found that MMA is like one of the only schools in the region that has a logistics with the business. So uh, I found that very valuable. and. Uh, their internship program here is amazing compared to other schools around the area. So here we are. I'm gonna put you on the spot for a second, Noah. What is, what is logistics? Why is that important? Uh, logistics <laughs> is everywhere, like in every single company. So that's another good reason uh, to get the degree is because there's logistics in every single company, uh, which is basically getting things from point A to point B. So uh, there's logistics in shipping industry, there's logistics in retail industry, there's logistics in like every single industry that there is. 
Yeah, we're one of the few schools in the country that has that logistics component. So that is really incredible. Jackson, I'm going to have you uh, wrap it up here. Go for it. Awesome. So yeah, I'm Jackson. I, uh, I'm in the marine engineering technology major here. And basically that's four years here. And when I graduate, I get the unlimited license, uh, the unlimited tonnage license um, from the Coast Guard. So any ship in the world, any place in the world. And uh, it's pretty cool. So I came here because, you know, I always like working with my hands from doing stuff at work to uh, doing stuff at home on the vehicles, on the dirt bikes, all that. So uh came here because they had the most hands-on experience that you could get. And uh, I have family in the industry and they all tell me that Maine Maritime has the best reputation. Uh, I look at some of the other schools and just it's unparalleled to uh, what you get out of here. So yeah, that's why I came. Where are you from? I, uh, I'm from upstate New York. It's about an hour and a half north of the city. It's a town called Newburgh. Um, yeah, but I wanted to go to Maine Maritime. I knew that. And then I looked into SUNY and it just uh, didn't even look the same. So yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you guys all. We're excited to really dive in. Um, and I'm going to pose the first question because you guys have all kind of touched on it a little bit through your intros. Um, but how, so we talk about, and you guys are living it, we have this wealth of a waterfront down at, down on our campus um, with 60, over 60 boats that our students can take out in the afternoons. We have the schooner boat in, we've got obviously the ship, but we're not taking that out every afternoon for a little trip around the harbor, although that would be amazing. Um, but one of the questions that was pre-submitted was, how are the Academy's vessels utilized by each major? Can any, any one of our majors utilize these vessels, whether you're gaining that license or not? So I don't know who wants to jump in first, um, if somebody's chomping at the bit. Ryan, I saw that. <laughs> Jay, go for it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would say that um, in the vessel ops, uh, we, we are on every single boat uh, at least once uh, within easily the first two years. Um, and then various boats we spend more times on. So uh, within the very first, uh, first half of the semester, we're on the launches. Um, so there's these big open boats that will hold you know, 18 people. And uh, we learn how to back into slips, how to back in next to the ship, um, dock, uh, tow other boats, uh, both on the hip and from behind, push boats, um, all that kind of fun stuff within the first uh, semester. And then we're also out on all of the sailing boats. Um, so we learn basic sailing. Um, and then later on, uh, we do ship handling. So we learn how to drive uh, the Captain Clark, which is a big uh, navigation vessel that we have. Uh, we spend a lot of time on that for TNAV. And then the tugboat Penagoet, we spend a fair amount of time on um, for ship handling. And then if we do decide to do the tug endorsement, we spend even more time on that. And then for ship handling as well, we spend time on the Bowdoin. Um, if you decide to spend more time on the boat and we go out two to three times a week and then learn all the fun ins and outs of sail handling, uh, driving the boat, going aloft. Um, and then in and amongst that, we have other vessels that um, subsea takes out in the afternoon. So you get to learn extra ship handling that way. Um, and we have anything from center consoles to inboard twin drive, um, yeah, we have lots of boats and they're all utilized all the time by us. It's, it's a lot of fun. And basically it's down on the waterfront, it's kind of a play zone. So um, as much time as you want to spend down there um, in and around the boats is as much time as you can spend down there. So um, you can learn as much as you want. Yeah, you had mentioned that supplemental seamanship, which is offered in the afternoons and it's open to all of our majors. So it doesn't matter if you're gaining that license or not. Any student, we purposely don't have classes during that time, um, can be out enjoying it. Noah, you um, had a very unique opportunity to enjoy one of the largest vessels we have. Do you want to mention that briefly? 
Uh, yeah, so this past summer, uh, I did one of my internships. So you have an optional internship uh, as an IBL your sophomore year. Uh, and I did my optional one on the training ship State of Maine, which is the big vessel that MMA owns. Um, on there, I worked as a logistics officer. So you don't have to be um, regimented to get on the ship, um, but you will go on the ship if you are uh, in a regimented major, um, but you don't have to be. And uh, as there, I worked as a logistics officer, just ordering stuff, uh, making sure that everything was well supplied on the boat. Um, other than that, um, I think that's pretty amazing. There's probably not many other business students out there that have been able to cruise on a 500 foot vessel at in their sophomore year of college, which is amazing. Um, Jackson, Shannon, or Haley, do you guys want to jump in about the use of the boats? Yeah, I can. Um, so in Ocean Studies, one of the main vessels that we use is the Research Vessel Friendship. Um, it's super cool. It has an A-frame and a brand new <laughs> CTD that was just attached to it, which stands for conductivity, temperature, and depth. So it's this um, piece of machinery that's just able to be lowered into the water to collect certain water samples and things like that. It was actually just completely redone because it broke <laughs> a couple years ago. So um, that's super exciting. I'm hopefully going to be able to use that for my senior research. Um, but what I really love about um, the, that vessel in the Ocean Studies major is we are really on that vessel, I would say the second week of class. So you don't really wait until you're older or you don't wait until you're a sophomore, like some other colleges might. You really are just um, put on that boat. You have your freshman cruise, which is an all day cruise when you take one of our intro level courses here, um, intro to oceanography. So it's an all day cruise where you do tons of different measurements and it's just such an amazing experience. And to be able to do that um, like a few weeks into school is just a really, really cool experience. Uh, jumping on a boat first week freshman year is pretty amazing. <laughs> Very amazing, I must add. <laughs> Shannon, did, or Jackson, did you guys want to add in from that unlimited perspective? Yeah, I'll jump in. Um, so like Haley just mentioned their version of a freshman cruise. So for us students in an unlimited license program, um, such as myself in marine transportation or Jackson in marine engineering technology, our freshman cruise is a little bit different than that. Uh, we go out for about 70 days on the training ship State of Maine, a big 500 foot long vessel. Um, and for our unlimited license students, the training ship State of Maine is kind of our, our biggest playground for sure. Um, right from the very beginning, when we show up for our what we call regimental preparatory training, we're on the boat right from the very beginning, uh, learning the ins and outs of the workings of bigger vessels. Um, but similar to Ryan, we get lots of experience on the smaller vessels as well. Yeah, so uh, there's a uh, class like most of the unlimited license majors don't really get a lot of time on the smaller vessels here, but there are electives you can take if you're really interested in, you know, learning how to control the smaller vessels here on campus. Um, so that's pretty cool opportunity. You not necessarily have to be on the big ship and only the big ship. There's some opportunity to kind of expand your taste. Thank you for that. It's always nice to hear from you all. I know Kate and I are always um, telling students that they are more than welcome to take advantage of our working waterfront and get exposure to getting on different styles of vessels. And I'm sure it's a little bit more exciting to hear that, yes, that's actually the case from the students directly. We had a, a question come in through the chat. Um, I began to answer it, but I realized it was too big <laughs> to answer just via the chat. And what I'm gonna do is break it up into two pieces. Um, I'm gonna first dive into a little bit the differences between our engineering programs. And then I'd like to go a little bit deeper into the differences between our transportation programs, if you'll bear with me. And Noah, don't worry, if you have something to add, of course, we'd love to hear from you as well as Haley. Um, but I wanted to start with Jackson because the question was really, what's the difference between systems engineering and operations 
but I even want to take a step back from that before I set you off. So we actually offer six engineering programs. We um, have done a couple of webinars really diving deeply into the ins and outs of those programs. I'm going to sum it up as quickly as I can. We offer two tracks. There's marine, there's power. Um, marine side, unsurprisingly, you're getting the same license that Jackson is getting. Power, you're preparing to work shore side. And for those nuances in between, I am going to pass it over to Jackson. You ready to take it over? <laughs> yeah, no doubt. So uh, you're definitely right. That would have been a long thing to type out. But um, basically what you got on the marine side of things, starting at, you know, sort of the most difficult is uh, marine systems engineering which uh, for the unlimited license is a five-year major. And basically that is everything that I get out of it, like uh, the unlimited license, being able to work on the ships and also with the ability to design. That's where the systems part comes into play. So it's pretty cool to have some, uh, some big fallback for say, you, you know, you want to slow down, you want to come off the ship, go back to land someday, whatever. But um, so when I'm in marine engineering technology, is an ABET credited uh, license or in major. And so I get an unlimited license. And what that means is any ship, any place. And uh, I also have the ability to fall back into a, a power plant sort of thing. And, you know, I can come back to shore and make things easier. And then on the other side of the street is the power engineering, which uh, is in, is not a licensed major as far as being on the ship and Coast Guard and all that. So basically what that is, is pre preparing you to uh, work in a power plant or a paper mill, or I'm not sure how many of you, you know, are out from Western Maine or whatever. There's a lot of paper mills, but uh, yeah, so you can do all that. And um, PET is also an ABET accredited uh, major, power engineering and technology. However, PEO and MEO, are not ABET credited, but there are some other things you can do with those uh, majors to get sort of attachments on your license. So there's, there's definitely some flexibility, ways to improve. One thing I will know is uh, if you do decide to go power engineering, it's harder to jump up to marine engineering after you graduate than it is to go from marine engineering down to power engineering in a power plant. So that's something to keep in mind, you know, like aim high and then you can end up on land if you want. So, yeah, I mean, it seems complicated, I know, but uh, it gets simple, I promise. Yeah, and to backfill, um, the way I think about those different styles of engineering, so the um, systems piece, just as Jackson mentioned, is, is very challenging or rigorous in terms of the advanced math courses you'd take as a student here. Whereas with the engineering technology, both on the marine and the power side, um, your math courses will be a little bit more rooted in trigonometry as opposed to calc. And the operations piece is different in terms of, um, although I would say all of our programs are hands-on, operations would be the most hands-on. So in your career, think about rather than being the design side, maybe on that systems engineering when you graduate, uh, you'd be the one with tools in hand. You would take those plans and go build. That's sort of the way. Would you, would you agree with that at all, Jackson? <laughs> yeah, I would say that's 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 pretty much what I'm thinking. But you can be the person with the tools in any single one of those majors. Say you don't really are not interested in design, and you go design. It's it's very open to uh to your options. So yeah. And the other piece I liked that you mentioned was that ABET accreditation. So what that translates to very specifically, um, and it's dependent upon what you want for your engineering career outcome, um, but you're able to sit for that Fundamentals of Engineering exam as a senior, that FE, which can prepare you later on in your career to take a PE, the Professional Engineering exam. And the way that the coursework is set up, you can take that FE if you're in the engineering technology or the systems. Whereas operations won't lead you towards that route, it leads you more towards facilities management, as Jackson mentioned, working on the power plant side, things like that. But thank you for that. I wanted to kick it over to Shannon. I know that she's getting a minor in engineering. If you had any more to add to those pieces. Yeah, so like Jackson was just mentioning, um, like it is easier to work your, kind of start at the top and work your way down if you want to go down. Um, 
not this is engineering, I'm kind of going on a tangent, um, but it's kind of the same thing for in the transportation side of things as well. Um, what I'm doing and what Ryan's doing, um, one of the biggest differences is the size vessel that we can work on. Um, so I can work on any size vessel and limited tonnage while Ryan's limited to that 1600 ton vessel. Um, if you're unsure what you wanna do, I always recommend people start at the top. It's a lot easier to go down. Um, if you start out marine transportation, that unlimited license, and you're like, whoa, what am I getting myself into? This is a little bit too much. Um, it's a lot easier to drop down to VOT to get that 1600 ton. Um, not that it's not doable to work your way back up because it certainly is just going to be a little bit more work for you. But like um, up and down metaphor, but don't think because you're going down, say in license size, or you're going down on the engineering side from having that license to not, that it's lesser. Absolutely yeah. not. It just prepares you for different styles of programs. So the up and down, I use it too. It doesn't mean one is better or more lucrative or anything like that. It's just, it's so based on what you want to do. But, and Shannon segued very nicely in terms of those different license pieces. Um, I think you just touched on this, the unlimited license, unsurprisingly, unlimited size vessels and any waters all over the world. And then if, Ryan, if you wouldn't mind sort of rounding out what that, uh, uh, the limited licenses look like. Yeah, so, I mean, even though it's a quote unquote limited license, um, you know, several of us end up working on vessels that are well over 1600 tons as a licensed mate. Um, it just basically means that, um, like Shannon was saying, we might have to work a little bit more to get an unlimited license, uh, go a little bit more of the old school hawse piping route to get that high. Um, but, you know, 1600 tons is, uh, you know, depending on what kind of vessel you actually end up wanting to work on, it can, like I said earlier, it could be anywhere from, you know, the Tug Penangoet, which is, um, I think, uh, 70 tons, all the way up to an ocean going tug, which can be, you know, 150, 180 tons, uh, and so on and so forth. And then, you know, give an idea, a, you know, relatively small cruise ship, you know, could be around 1600 tons. So it's not just the transportation side of it, or even the fishing boat side of it, but you could also get into the yachting side of it. Um, a lot of yachts are going to be under 1600 tons, even your mega yachts. So, you know, if you want to be a yacht captain um, and go cruise around the Caribbean and all that kind of fun stuff, then that's another option. Um, or you could also be, you know, on a tall ship. Um, so there's plenty of plenty of options. Um, the way I kind of look at it is it opens up um, a wider range of vessels to work on than uh, unlimited because it's kind of mostly your transportation of cargoes you know, whatever that cargo happens to be. Um, so that's just kind of my thoughts on it. And I have a follow-up question because we've used the word mate a few times. Does anybody want to take a stab at explaining sort of that hierarchy on the ship? What is mate? Why do I want to be a mate? What if I really want to become a captain? What do I do? That's a big question. <laughs> Yeah, so I can kind of take that one. Um, so we get into working on ships. There is a hierarchy. Um, of course, everyone's heard of captain. Captain's kind of at the top. Um, larger size vessels, then it kind of splits off into the deck side of things and the engine side of things, and each have their own hierarchy within. Um, for the deck side of things, after captain, it goes chief mate, and then second mate, and then third mate. Um, so when I graduate as a marine transportation operations major, I will have my unlimited tonnage third mate's license, which means I'm starting at the bottom of that, the deck officer side of things. Um, from there, I can work my way up to second mate and then chief mate and then up to captain if I want to go so far. Um, each mate kind of has different roles on board a ship. So there's, there's sections within that, but would Ryan or Haley, would you agree it's a similar hierarchy also on smaller vessels? Yeah, I totally agree. Because um, essentially once we, 
once we get once we graduate and get our 1600 ton license it's as a mate um you know even though everybody here is ideally going for that captain's position um even though we're going to college and we're on a fast track to get that position we still have to go through all the steps um so typically we get hired onto a company um or a vessel as uh, a third mate um, and then working our way up to a second and a first or a chief mate. And then eventually after a couple of years worth of um, experience, then we actually go and take another test for our master's license, um, otherwise known as your captain's license. And at that point, then we are officially a you know, ship's master or a captain. Um, but like uh, Shannon was saying, we also each different mate position is in charge of different responsibilities and uh, different watch standings aboard the vessel. They're all very important. I, I just wanna mention that the licensing that Brian and Shannon and Jackson are gaining here after four years would be a license that would probably take um, Shannon and Jackson 20 to 25 years, Ryan probably 15 to 20 years, to slowly work their way up in the industry um, and gain that license. And so not only are they coming away with the same license after four years, but they're coming away with the responsibility, the leadership, um, that command structure. So there's quite a bit that goes into it, um, into that license. So there's not a more than less than um, higher, you know, above, below, uh, they're amazing large licenses that um, these students are going to be walking away with and the ability to be a third watch officer on the world's largest ship. Imagine 1500 foot vessel, three times the size of the vessel that's behind Elizabeth in the photo. Um, they can be the third watch officer uh, right after graduation, which is a huge responsibility. Uh, um, I, one thing real quick, Kayla. Kate? Yes, um, Jackson, I wanted you to look at, there's some chat and some question and answer that might be more geared towards engineering. So I didn't want you to miss those. Yep. So yes, I go just, for it, Ryan. <laughs> yep. Um, so just kind of one uh, side note is uh, as a VO, as a Vessel Operations and Technologies um, student, after our, uh, during our spring semester, our spring sophomore semester, we actually sit for our 200 ton license which is the same uh, license that uh, Kelly as a dual major goes for. And kind of what that goes for is it now makes us a licensed uh, seafarer so that when we go out for our summer co-ops, um, our sophomore and our junior years, we can actually get hired onto companies as a mate while we're still in school and earn mate time, mate sea time while we're actually during our co-ops. So that all goes towards our Howard higher license um, of the 1600 time. The opportunities, the, those resumes that you guys leave with are like bricks, <laughs> they're pretty incredible. Elizabeth, did you have something to continue that, that question thread? I... No, I think that I uh, got pretty much everyone's, but I did see, and I just wanted to address this real quick before we got off base, an excellent question in our Q and A. Um, what if I have already applied, I've been accepted, I chose my major in, for example, business, and after hearing this, I'm really interested in vessel operations technology. What do I do? Simple. <laughs> I will um, eventually put Kate and I's email um, in the chat in just a moment. All you have to do is email Kate or I and just say, hey, I'm currently in this major and I'd like to switch to that major. You could do that every week. Please don't, but you could. So it's very simple um, to switch your major, especially after you've applied. Yeah, don't feel like you're locked into anything. And if you haven't applied yet and you're thinking about pressing that submit button, but you're just waiting to figure out what major, press submit. We're not evaluating you for the major. We're evaluating you for the school. So um, just keep that in mind. Thank you, Elizabeth. That's really um, an important point to note. You guys have mentioned um, throughout this thread, and we actually had a few questions come in pre-submitted that kind of all threaded together in terms of what opportunities in the summer are you guys able to do and what does that look like? Um, and so are they are summer programs required for the majors? Why do you do them? 
And um, can you speak a little bit more towards some of those opportunities? And so we've kind of put uh, some of the licensing majors on the forefront. I'm gonna turn it to Noah and Haley to lead this one, and then we'll circle back to um, those that are gaining that license. Yeah, I can talk on this for a second. So this past summer, I had the most amazing opportunity to work with a few of my professors. Um, we did several different types of research projects, um, some based on land, some based on the intertidal zone, some based 20 miles offshore. So that was really cool. Um, for SVO, you have to do a co-op um, and you have to have, to get your license, you have to have a certain amount of um, like uh, hours or days on a, so it's 60 days on a vessel that's over hundred tons and then 60 days on a vessel that is near coastal water. So under hundred tons. Um, the really cool thing about this summer is that I was able to be on a vessel for some of the time doing a lot of um, collecting lobster larva. So since we were on that vessel, I was actually able to drive, since it was 20 miles offshore, it ended up being like a two and a half hour ride out there. So we, I was able to drive the vessel, which means I could get hours that goes towards my license. So I kind of hit two birds with one stone there, which was really cool. I got that science ex experience while also being able to get hours towards um, SVO, which was really cool. But yeah, so for the sciences, um, there's plenty of opportunities out there are really um, one of the bonuses about just the professors here for the Ocean Studies program is they're always sending out different internships and different opportunities that you can get. Um, how I got my summer job working with a couple of my professors is I just told my advisor that, that I was interested in um, getting a type of internship. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I'm like something obviously with the ocean, but um, that's about it. And she actually came to me saying, I'm actually looking for a student to work with me in my summer project, if you'd like to join me. And I was, of course, I was like, definitely yes. So um, yeah, there's plenty of different ways to be able to get those opportunities. And there's um, being a dual major, you have that um, experience to be able to hit the science aspect of it while also being able to get the hours towards your small vessel. Um, just to add on a little more, this upcoming summer, I've um, pretty much decided that I want to do something, or I more like we need to do something to be on a vessel of either 100 ton or over 100 ton to get um, pretty much all my hours for um, SVO. So um, going to the career fair, I was able to talk to several different people, um, hopefully getting some opportunity there. Um, so the career fair is a great experience for people to be able to do for co-ops as well. So I talked to American Cruise Lines and I'm looking at probably becoming a deckhand or something with them, which would be really cool. Also, um, there is, I had a thought and it completely escaped me. <laughs> But um, yeah, so there's plenty of different opportunities there for SVO. Um, oh, also being a part of the regiment, you have the commandant staff, which is really cool. They personally have been helping me because I want to possibly get into the Coast Guard after I graduate. So they actually helped me to have the opportunity this summer to go two weeks on a Coast Guard cutter, which is going to be such an amazing experience and I'm absolutely thrilled to be able to do that and also that will go back to helping me get my hours for SVO as well so overall to finish up my rants it's <laughs> there's plenty of opportunities um, for the sciences and also small vessel based things which is very cool <laughs> thanks Haley no that was a great ex explanation as to everything that you you can do. No, I'm going to turn it to you as in terms of the international business and summer opportunities. Uh, just like Haley said, there's plenty of opportunities for all majors here, regardless, uh, IBL especially. Um, I know a bunch of kids that are in my grade or uh, just graduated that work all over from Florida to California. Um, like I said, this past summer, I went on the train ship. Uh, I got that. Uh, the hookup with that because I was actually in the regiment. Um, so I'm voluntary reg and the commandant staff uh, reached out to me and said that they were looking for a logistics officer. Uh, 
and I accepted. And so I went on that. Uh, and then, like I said, um, sophomore year is optional, but your mandatory um, internship is your junior year. Uh, so like tomorrow I have an interview with NASCO, which is a company in San Diego. I met them at the career fair. So especially uh, one of the great things about MMA is the career fair. Uh, it's really hyped up, but it's hyped up for good reason. Uh, you can really get a lot of connections there and it will help you further your career once you get out. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that career fair. It's an incredible uh, aspect to our community because these companies are seeking the talent that our Maine Maritime Academy students and graduates have, whether they're using them for internships or putting those job offers out um, while they're students here. It's really incredible. Um, let's turn to the, uh, to continue on the internship and the co-op experience before we go to the unlimited side, Ryan. I think you had, you'd kind of touched on many of these aspects. Was there anything else that you wanted to fill in in terms of summer opportunities? Uh, sure. So as a VOT, we're actually required to do a co-op um, all three of the summers that we're here. Uh, so right after your freshman year, you're required to do a co-op. And then your uh, sophomore and junior summers, you're required to do co-ops. Um, and it's, uh, like Haley was saying earlier, uh, the different size vessels you're on count towards C time, towards your different licenses. So in order to get the higher licenses, you have to kind of pay attention to what size vessels you get on. So it's kind of a fun little game of not only trying to find a job that you want to do for the summer, because not only is it for school, but you also get paid for these, um, but finding one that's on a vessel of a size that counts towards your, uh, your C time. Um, so I'm really big into tall ships. So one of my um, problems is finding a tall ship that's over 150 tons uh, and is looking for uh, basically a cadet to work on it for the summer. Uh, it's, it's a little bit of a fun juggle game. Um, so I actually ended up doing my co-op on the Bowdoin this past summer. So that's also an option. Um, unfortunately, it's only like 66 tons. So it doesn't really count for a whole lot. But it's a lot of fun because we sailed up and down the coast and went to a bunch of fun ports and we learned a lot. Um, and there are other vessels out and about that do to school training type stuff. And then you can also get on the big working vessels. Like a couple of my friends ended up on uh, ships that sailed from Seattle up to the Aleutian Islands in uh, Alaska, just moving cargo back and forth. Um, and they had a blast doing that as well. So. Basically, it's just a, you have to do it uh, for a minimum of 60 days. So it's a matter of, like I said earlier, finding a way to make it worth your while financially, as well as learning as much as you absolutely can uh, the entire summer. So. And, and it's a paid experience, which is a really important thing to know. Thanks, Ryan. Um, Shannon and Jackson, why don't you talk about the unlimited side of things in terms of what are your summers like? <laughs> so, yeah, um, usually every year with most of majors of the panelists we have here, you're pretty busy um, for the unlimited side of things. Uh, your freshman year, after your freshman year, you'll do freshman cruise, which we talked a little bit about that. But basically uh, for MTO, it's 70 days for uh, engineers. It's 37 days. So uh, there's just a difference in required seat time. And then uh, after your sophomore year, you do what we call cadet shipping. That's basically you go out as a student on a working vessel in the maritime industry. So that can be anywhere from a uh, container ship uh, for cargo, or it could be, you know, a, a row row, which transport cars, or it could be uh, an oil tanker. There's a lot of different things going on there. But um, yeah, it's, it's the real deal. So it's pretty cool. And I had a blast on freshman cruise. And they say, if you, if you like freshman cruise, cadet shipping is just absolutely going to blow your mind. So excited for that. And then uh, after that, it's junior cruise and uh, pretty similar to freshman cruise. Bunch of it was some differences there in what you're learning on the cruise, but uh, similarly set up. So, yeah. Shannon, 
Shannon, do you want to jump in here? Was there anything else you wanted to add? Yeah, so I'll touch a little bit on the that uh, cadet shipping that Jackson just mentioned, because I actually just did it this past summer, and Jackson was right, it is mind-blowing. Um, so like Jackson said, all of our summers are, they're pretty full. Um, every summer you have something to do. Um, it's not just because they want to keep you busy, it's actually a requirement in order to get your license, because you do need that seat time. Um, past summer, I actually did half of my freshman cruise and my cadet shipping, because uh, my class is still a little bit messed up because of COVID. Um, but yeah, so I got to go out with a great company called Crowley Maritime, and I spent about 65 days on a Conroe vessel, so container ship and railroad vessel, about 800 feet long, and it was absolutely amazing. I loved every second of it. So that shipping is an amazing experience. Um, it's kind of your first real look at the actual maritime industry, um, stepping away from the classroom side of things where you're you're kind of sitting back, observing a little bit. Um, when you get go out on your cadet shipping, you're you're really thrown into it, and you get your own responsibilities and duties. And it's just you. You're the only student, so you don't have to kind of share the workspace with 200 other kids. So they really depend on you a lot, which is fantastic because you get a lot of great experience. Well, and that experience comes with global travel too, depending on. The ships you're on and, and your billets, um, VOT, our vessel operations students gaining that up to 1,600 ton license, our small vessel operations students can go internationally as well. Um, and so somebody had asked about abroad programs. And so although we don't have a traditional abroad program where you might go spend a semester um, in another country, you will be filling up your passport <laughs> for sure. You will be filling up your passport and as COVID kind of runs its course um, and things are opening up more, our training ship does um, quite a bit of international travel. We've been a little bit limited right now, um, but traditionally that ship um, is stopping in four or five different ports um, internationally. Elizabeth, did you want to, did you have a question you wanted to throw out there? I do, and I wanted to mention, despite <laughs> our COVID limitations, our ship still got into international waters, so students are still able to experience some of those larger shipping channels. Um, just did not seem like the year to try to have students get off at foreign ports, and that was going to be a lot of paperwork, and that's not what the cruise is about, right? So our next summer, we are hoping for, um, you know, to be able to return to normal. I know everybody, like, knock on wood. For everybody, for all of you watching at home too, um, so that we can return to some of those foreign parts as well. But um, we're uh, nearing the end, believe it or not, the time goes quickly. So I just wanted to encourage everyone in the audience uh, to keep filing those questions in. We've been able to answer them through the chat. So you might've noticed that things been exploding. <laughs> so keep them coming. Um, but I had a question that was actually pre-submitted that I wanted to ask. And it has to do with the regiment because often it's confusing. For example, if you look at Shannon, she's wearing a khaki uniform, Jackson is in his blues. If you look at Ryan, I'm calling you out for your cool sweatshirt. <laughs> you know, same thing with Haley. Although Noah and Haley are voluntarily in the regiment, it's just nice to understand, well, what is the regiment? Who has to be in it? Do I have to be in it? Do I wanna be in it? So. If I will kind of go, we'll go shades, right? So we'll start with Shannon and Jackson explaining what the requirement is, what the regiment is like. Then we'll have Noah and Haley say, well, why are they in it? And then we'll have Ryan sort of follow up with, well, what's it like if I'm on this regimental campus and I'm not in the regiment? As just one piece, know that about two thirds of our student body, so about 65% of our students are in the regiment, um, either because they're unlimited license major requires them to be on spoiler, um, or they volunteer. I'm going to pass it off to uh, Jackson first. What's the regimen all about? So for me, it's a, it's a requirement from the Coast Guard because I because of the unlimited license. And um, really, it's just kind of a uh, like a structure and something you just you're able to really follow orders better. You're, you're able to manage time. You're able to do all these life skills and uh, that starts from the minute you get here in RPT, which I'm not sure if you're familiar with that term. It's a 
regimental preparatory training. And I don't want to say boot camp, but it's kind of styled in that sort of way. Um, it's not an uh, uh, eliminate the weak. We only want the strong. It's designed so that everybody can succeed and uh, grow from it. It's not something to put you down. It's something to build you up. And uh, so that was pretty cool. You get such a great brotherhood and sisterhood out of it. And uh, that was, was really awesome. And then as you go on, uh, you keep using those skills that you got from the beginning to really just sort of build on all these skills you have. And uh, yeah, so we have the uniforms and all that fun stuff. And it just becomes like second nature, part of life, you know, so it's really not too bad at all. So uh, Shannon can go further with it. Yeah, so like Jackson said, it's required um, if you're in an unlimited license track program. If you're not, you're more than welcome to join the regiment. We love having voluntary regiment uh, like Noah and Haley both are. So I'm sure they'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but yeah, so you probably noticed uh, me and Jackson are both in the regiment. We are wearing different uniforms right now. Uh, so Jackson's actually wearing our work uniform right now. And I'm wearing our kind of everyday, we call our khaki uniform. Um, but yeah, like Jackson said, the regiment isn't scary. It's not something to be scared about. Um, it is like a big giant brotherhood, pretty much like he said. Um, you get broken up into companies and your company kind of becomes like your family. You go through everything together um, from being yelled at at the beginning to standing together in the rain and morning muster, things like that. You go through everything together. So you really do get to build a nice little family there. Um, and the nice thing about that is the people in your company, those people you're going through everything with are going to be in your classes. So you get to help each other through everything. And the other piece just to add, um, the regiment was intended basically to mimic life out at sea on land. So if you think about the companies as a small ship crew, right, you're getting really accustomed to being part of a whole, which maybe, who knows, <laughs> attracted Noah and Haley. Why did you two opt into the regiment when your majors don't require it as a Coast Guard requirement? I'll start with Haley. Okay. <laughs> um, so for a while, I knew that I wanted a maritime school. And a big reason for that is because I wanted the regiment. So um, I really like the structure that it brings. I also am gonna, planning right now on going into either the Coast Guard through Officer Candidate School or um, to the NOAA Corps. So I always knew for a while that I wanted um, the regiment and kind of like that military-esque type um, schooling. So when I first joined the regiment, um, I was a little scared to be voluntary reg just because there aren't many of us here at the school. I also kind of thought, okay, well, I'm not really going to be a non-reg and I'm technically not really going to be, well, I am a reg, but I'm not going to be an actual like with everyone else, even though I go through inspection, I go through muster, wear the uniform every day. I'm like, I'm not sure how well I'm going to fit into either, I was scared I was gonna be on the outs with both communities <laughs> since I'm not like in classes with everyone with all the reg. And I'm also like kind of not really non-reg. So I was kind of that weird in between, um, but I really have found that it has not affected me to the extent of what I thought it was when I first joined. I absolutely love being a part of the non-reg community and the reg community. I think it really like helps me and all the other voluntary kind of bring the two very different types of the school together which is really cool. Um, yeah, I, I really like it. It brings a great structure to my day. Um, it really, one of the main things we teach you here in the regiment is time management skills, <laughs> which um, I absolutely love. I think everyone should learn how to manage their time well, because during mug month, which is the first month you're here, you're technically called a mug, which means midshipman under guidance. Um, and you have a very, very strict ish schedule um, for that first month that you're here. So it's kind of like your training period. Um, and you really have to learn how to balance your schedule and your classes and your homework and the reg all at once. And it's 100% attainable. 
Um, and it really helped me a lot because now I know if I want to do certain things with the weekends, I'm like, okay, I can easily get my homework done throughout random periods of the day and things like that, which is super, super helpful. Um, I also really think it teaches life skills. Um, it teaches discipline. It teaches respect. All of these things that are pretty um, necessary in the industry that um, this school brings, which, yeah, so all of it, it's really helpful. I absolutely love the regiment and I'm super glad to be a part of it. Noah? Um, to be completely honest, the reason that I joined the reg was because one of my roommates, uh, my freshman year from high school was going into a regiment and major um, and he can't be roommates with a uh, not or a regimented if you are a non-regimented major your freshman year so um I joined the reg i completed rpt uh once i completed rpt i was like okay i might as well complete mug month i completed mug month uh and i said to myself i might as well complete my first year in the regiment i completed my first year and then i joined the training staff uh which is a big part of the regiment here i joined the training staff did another year I joined the training staff again this year, and then I applied for a wedge position next year, my senior year. So, um, yeah, I just took it and ran with it. And I definitely think it, uh, like Haley's putting on, it, uh, it teaches you some great life skills, like time management, um, and it, it does help you with your resume. So I think that it does give me an edge over um, some of the other competitors for jobs. Uh, if you're in regimented structure, companies would uh, like to see that. So. The one piece I wanted to highlight, um, as you get deeper and deeper into your major, you won't have as much overlap in your classes between regimental and non-regimental. But even if you are in the regiment voluntarily, although you're doing different summer things, you might not be going out on the, the training vessel necessarily, um, you have the same access to those student leadership positions, just as Noah indicated, to become that um, student leadership or part of the wedge, which is sort of that upper level. Because at the end of the day, the regiment is student-led <laughs> and it can't run without student leaders. But, so now we'll swing back over to Ryan, the other side of the coin. What, you're not in the reg, what's that like? <laughs> yeah, the dark side. Um, so, I don't know, we, we, uh, I guess, sort of similar to the reg because like you touched on uh, after um, a while our class courses kind of diverge um, a lot of us end up becoming uh, really really close so we kind of have our own little uh, groups although it's not nearly as structured as the regiments um, with that being said uh, I have a lot of friends who are both in the reg and voluntary reg as well um, I know it's four people that I have classes with every day who are voluntary reg VOT. Um, and I think it's a really good program. Uh, the biggest reason I decided not to was because I wore khakis for six years in the Navy. Um, and I just decided I didn't want to continue wearing khakis while I was going to school. Um, nothing against the reg. Uh, but uh, no, it's a really, it's a really cool program. Um, and then non-reg, uh, you have access to all the same um, kind of programs. Um, and then if you wanted to talk to the leadership, um, I've talked to the commandant and the assistant commandant numerous times and kind of had uh, like mugs come over and check out VOT stuff and vice versa, um, send our young VOT people to check out what all the reg people do. Um, so there's a lot of, uh, I guess, cross pollinating going on. and. Um, as, as a school, it's all really cohesive. So um, even though it's the reg and they're separate, it's not the same time. So it's pretty cool. We're all under that maritime umbrella. I like that you said that. But Kate, unless you have anything to add, believe it or not, we're at time. <laughs> I know these hours go quick. I do have one last question I want to ask out there. And this hopefully one of the questions that was pre-submitted was what kind of jobs can you get with majors that you guys are going for? But I want to twist that question in terms of what is your dream job? Why are you here? What do you hope to obtain with this um, major? 
and this degree that you're going to be getting and um really hope to take your life's path if you even know yet because <laughs> there's so many options out there um does anybody want to go first is anybody chomping at the bit like i just got a job at this career fair and i can't wait to go out <laughs> No, I'm going to put you on the spot. What are you going to, what do you want to be when you grow up? Uh, what do I want to be when I grow up? Um, so ideally, like in 20 years, I want to be a stockbroker because um, they make bank and you just look at a screen all day and watch the lines go up <laughs> and you make money. Uh, but in order to be a stockbroker, you have to have money to begin with, which I do not right now currently. Uh, so starting off, uh, I like to be work with a military contractor or some kind of uh, port logistics officer, uh, just like managing the ship, like air traffic control for uh, shipyards. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's such a unique position that you can take having come away with this international business and logistics degree from a maritime school that most people don't even know that those positions that are quite lucrative um, even exist. And so, um, that's, that is a really important position and one that somebody like yourself can easily obtain with this degree. Thanks for that. Uh, Jackson, what do you, what about you? So I do, I would like to work for, uh, you know, a company like Crowley or Maersk, uh, one of the bigger shipping companies and, uh, just on a very large vessel sailing across the world. And, um, you know, you work six months out of the year. Uh, the rest of that time is yours to do with. And uh, you travel the world, get paid to do it. And uh, that sounds like a pretty sweet deal. So I'm um, excited for that. And, you know, maybe someday I want to settle down and uh, come back shoreside. There's a lot of options for that, you know, like a power plant or any sort of thing like that. So, um, yeah, got a lot of options and I'm excited to see where it goes. No doubt. Travel the world and get paid to do it. Yeah. No doubt. It's going to be sweet. Marina right there. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Haley, what about you? Um, so as I said a little bit in the beginning, I'm my current plan after um, school is to apply to officer candidate school. I'm currently in the process of um, kind of collecting all the information for that now or for my application process um, and or the NOAA core as well. Um, one big thing that I kind of utilize at this school is having both the marine science SVO because it means that I could get on a research vessel and I could drive it and I can do the research, which is super cool. So yeah, my current plan right now is to go either Coast Guard or NOAA Corps, um, pretty much overall to help people. That's, <laughs> that's um, people in the environment. That's really my um, main goal that's kind of what drives me um yeah i would say <laughs> that's the most basic answer <laughs> no that's a pretty pretty amazing um i don't know if everybody's noticed but in the chat haley has put her contact information which is quite generous of you thank you haley so if anybody has questions about the ocean science um, in general and that combination with small vessel operations haley's a good one to reach out to ryan what about you what do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> I want to be a pirate. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, um, no, I want to work in the, in the sailing industry, um, whether it's on tall ships or even more exciting uh, racing yachts. Um, so some of the bigger ones. Um, I've actually worked with Team Oracle before my past, past job, so it'd be really cool to get um, involved in that level of racing in the future. Um, and if that doesn't pan out, then, uh, you know, maybe some offshore supply, um, up in Alaska, that'd be pretty cool. With that 1600 ton license, there's so many options out there, which is pretty amazing, whether it's big, big tall ships to racing vessels to anything in between or taking the schooner boat and back to the Arctic, right? <laughs> which will happen here soon, very soon. Um, and that you guys watching, yeah, Ryan is really leading the chart, which is really amazing. Shannon, um, do you want to wrap it up here with 
where do you see yourself? Why are you getting this degree? What can you do with it? Yeah, so I'm going to be completely honest. I'm just winging it. Um, I'm not sure where I want to go. Um, I think captain kind of has, has a nice ring to it. So we'll see. Maybe I'll work my way all the way up to captain someday. Um, the one thing I really do know is that I want to be on large vessels. Um, it's kind of my own personal goal to find the largest vessel that I can get onto and kind of work my way onto there. Um, but yeah, other than that, I don't really know. Just kind of winging it. Uh, like Jackson said, going on some awesome adventures, working six months out of the year and spending my free time going to awesome places, seeing amazing things. Getting paid to see the world. And by winging it, you're doing a pretty incredible job. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys all again for tuning in. Elizabeth, did you have any last things? We need to get these guys back to the books because no, I think, uh, thank you so much for all of our panelists time. I know that it's a busy time of year right now in the uh, school year. And thank you to everybody at home who's watching. Um, as always, you know how to get in touch with Kate or myself. We're here for you, even though it doesn't feel that way due to the pandemic. Um, and we'll answer whatever questions you have. So thank you so much. We will be sending out this recording as well. So you can um, listen back into anything that you didn't quite catch the first time around. But, well, cool. I'm going to go ahead and end it. I wish everybody a good night and stay warm and dry out there. Bye.